The Rock Paper Scissors meta, or commonly referred to as counter swapping, is one of the core game mechanics since 2016. Due to the competitive balance of the current game system, it is common for you to go up against someone that seems just a little out of your league. Lucky for you, Overwatch is not a game of mechanics only. At times, one key ability from another hero is all it takes from getting your team wiped to making their lives absolute hell. I invited 3 professional players from each role to provide their inputs and compile the ultimate master list on how to counterpick every hero in the game on every role. For Anna, it's all about reducing her value from her key abilities, which are both highly impactful but on a much longer cooldown than other heroes. Apart from that, you also want to abuse her reduced mobility during her scope in configuration. The best tank counter swap to Anna is definitely D.Va. Being the immobile grandma she is, Anna's positioning is usually predictable as this hero is one that wants to set up big plays with her anti nades and slip darts. Simply holding down defense matrix through choke points and her high mobility makes D.Va the ideal hero for locking down a great Anna. Anna's scoped in position makes her move slower than the payload and she zooms in so much that she practically can't see much around her. Sniper like Hanzo who can take an aggressive off angle makes it easy to pick her off and she probably won't even see it coming. And for support, Anna is a character that mostly gets her value from her anti nades and her range, making Kiriko a very annoying matchup for her. Kiriko can deny Anna's nade value and mitigate her sleep dead with one ability and is able to effectively do Anna at a very long range, similar to how Hanzo does it for DPS. Kiriko also has a very small hitbox, making it difficult for Anna to actually land shots on her, even up close. Ashes Kid relies heavily on her consistent poke damage and most importantly, her dynamite itself leaving Ash relatively easy to be denied by D.Va's defense matrix. She is also easily dived and pressured from the D.Va, due to D.Va's much shorter cooldown on her boosters compared to Ash coach gun. For DPS, Widow is a strong counter mainly because she can take favorable drills by playing simply further than the Ash's falloff range. Not to mention, Ash's movement speed penalty while scoped in make her an easy target for Widow. Having a permanent mercy pocket from a pylon favors Ilari greatly in a 1v1 situation against Ash. Ashes need to scope in to even match Ilari range, it heavily slows her movement and makes her an easy target for Ilari. Bat-T's healing projectiles are hard to land but is rewarded with immense group healing potential. Ideally, a bat wants to play up close not only to easily land his healing projectiles but also to push consistent damage through. Most importantly, it is to bait out his immortality feel early so your team can follow up with a hard dive or an ultimate to close out the fight. Tank to deal with Baptiste will be Winston. Winston is able to cut off Baptiste's heal with his bubble and force Baptiste to take an undesirable position far far away from his team to play around the threat of getting dived. Sojourn provide a one shot opportunity so that Bab cannot react proactively with his immortality field, and also a consistent damage and slide make Bab struggle to survive when pressured by a sojourn and to heal the team at the same time. For support, Iliari is brilliant at baiting out cooldowns from Baptiste due to his obese hitbox that make him susceptible to spam damage. Iliari will also be able to pressure a squishy hero during the fight to bait out the Bab's immortality field, which is a very important skill on a long cooldown. Bastion's power spike comes in his configuration tank form. Cycling cooldowns around this and poking him from afar makes Bastion no more threatening than a simple top turret. Sigma is able to mitigate most of the spam damage using his shield and cycle the configuration tank using his kinetic grasp, absorbing most of the incoming damage. Most Bastions will be happily trade their configuration tank cooldowns to melt your Sigma barrier. So one cool trick is to pull out your kinetic grasp behind the barrier itself to absorb all the incoming damage directed to the shield. Contrary to popular beliefs, Hanzo is actually a very good counter to Bastion over a Genji. A smart Bastion will simply stop shooting when looking at a Genji, regardless of him having deflect or not. Hanzo's spam potential is more important to outrage the Bastion as well as provide high burst output to shred through the Bastion even while he has armor in ironclad. Zen is excellent at tearing through the Bastion's armor when he's in tank form. The Discord is also great at pressuring the Bastion to give up space in the front lines and take non-optimal angles during the configuration tank cooldown. Brigitta is overly reliant on proccing Inspire. Constantly pressuring her or her shield is crucial to reduce her Inspire uptime. Although being excellent at countering dive, Brick falls short when faced against poke or spam heroes. As such, the best counter swap for tank would probably be Sigma. Sigma is able to whittle down Brick's shield from a distance and is able to capitalize off Brick's aggression using a well-timed accretion. Ash is also a good counter to Brick because the shield is so small that it cannot really block Ash's dynamite consistently. Also, Ash plays from range so Brick essentially can't interact much against an Ash. Typically, landing an Anna nade against Brick almost guarantees a kill on her, but good Brick players usually know how to play around it by staying away from the tanks. 
whereas Baptiste is always good at pressuring Brick's shield, forcing her to back off of the fight early when she constantly needs to proc Inspire. This makes sure Brick is overly reliant on her cooldown instead of having Inspire up. Through the patches, Cassidy has become a strong mid-close range hitscan, with potent damage through the use of his revolver. However, Cassidy does fall short in many areas such as spam or even dive due to his lack of mobility and high damage falloff. Although most tanks do well against Cassidy, D.Va would definitely be the strongest due to her ability to close the distance easily using defense matrix and pummel him consistently with micro missiles oh up God. close. DPS wise, Sojourn is a good counter to Cassidy due to Bring her superior in. range and DPS. What makes it better is that Sojourn has an escape ability when the duel turns south or you can simply use it as additional mobility to stray from fire. Iliari is probably the best counter against Cassidy in a support role. She primarily outclasses him in both long and mid range DPS. And if you pick to challenge a Cassidy at range, you can simply tuck behind a corner and wait for the pylon healing before repicking him again. This guarantees you the win in the duel almost every single time. Diva exploits her mobility to provide excellent peel for her teammates. Constant poke damage as well as mobility disruption is the key to grounding a good Diva pilot. The best tank to play into Diva will probably be Sigma. Sigma is able to poke out Diva before the fight and can interrupt her boosters and defense matrix using accretion. And for DPS, personally Mei is the pick against Diva. She has a ridiculously high amount of damage due to her left click that D.Va cannot defend Matrix, as well as a Cryo Freeze and Ice Wall ability to sustain herself in a one-on-one -on -one fight against D.Va. All those spam supports such as Bab and Zen might be good to pressuring the D.Va at range. Brick might be the way, as D.Va just acts as a giant fat target for you to constantly proc Inspire. Defense Matrix can also not mitigate your whip shot, and it's very hard for D.Va to land solo kills on your teammate when she dives due to the fact that you constantly have Inspire and armor packs to provide. Doomfist is a fast paced brawl tank with high mobility and low cooldown durations allowing him to get in and out of fight as he pleases. To counter a carrying doom, you need to find any opportunity to disrupt his cycling of abilities to escape. The best tank to pick into Doom would definitely be Orisa. A well-timed Javelin will be able to deny any engagement and her Fortify is able to stop the Doom punch into the backline. Not to forget Orisa's Javelin spin will be able to displace Doom during his engage. Well, it looks like if he really hates Doomface for some reason, I wonder why. With the recent changes in Sombra skate, I believe that she is probably the best counter right now. Sombra can provide consistent damage to poke the Doomfist while keeping the threat of hacking the Doomfist before he escapes. She can also aggressively hunt down a disengaging Doomfist in the enemy backline while still retreating back to her team with relative ease. For support, Ana will definitely be the best pick against Doom. Firstly, her sleep dart easily brings Doomfist out of power block, and by landing an anti nade on the Doom, this encourages your flankers to actually chase the Doom down during his disengagement, forcing the Doomfist to give up a lot of space both before and after his engage. Echo is a versatile DPS hero, capable of playing in all dive, spam and poke composition, not to mention her potent sticky bombs and her ability to finish off any low HP hero with a focusing beam. With a high DPS, she greatly struggles with accuracy. Any way to negate her abilities or play at range is the key to countering an Echo. Although there aren't many tanks that you can enjoy playing against an Echo, D.Va will probably be your best shot. D.Va is able to mitigate most of her burst damage from her sticky bombs and has the vertical mobility needed to contest an Echo and even chase one down. In a high level gameplay, Sojourn tend to be picked more than Ash or Soldier to countering Echo, mainly due to her real gun and the ability to do one shot. Apart from that, her slide provides much more mobility than other hitscans to survive better, and more importantly, just landing a body shot real gun on Echo will increase so much pressure during her fly, and will often cause her to stay low but stay with her team and reduce the opportunities for an Echo to flank, which Echo excels at doing, being a hero with zero footstep. For the support role, Iliari will probably be your best counter to an Echo. Her range and damage is very good at pressuring any flying hero, which makes Echo pretty much unplayable without a mercy. And if she has a mercy, well, looks like you're out of luck, you might need to swap to one as well. Against a Genji, it's all about pressuring him early to reduce his stay in your backline. Heroes that can do fast and consistent poke while threatening to combo kill him will be your best bet against this Shimada. Winston is able to pressure and force cooldowns out of a Genji, as Genji is simply unable to deflect his primary and secondary fire. Winston primary is also able to track a flying Genji easily through the air, making it one of the easier heroes to pressure Genji early on. For DPS, Echo is probably your best chance. Her primary fire as well as the sticky bombs are a huge threat to Genji when he dies, especially when Genji gets below 50% HP, where she could use her focusing beam to kill the Genji while the Genji is unable to deflect it. 
Finally for support, Brick is a very good counter against Genji. Her shield bash goes through the Genji's deflect, and this forces the Genji to back off pretty early in most situations. Her whip can also knock a Genji away out of his dash range, and most importantly, her shield makes it very annoying for Genji to remotely do any damage against her or the support line. Against the most bullshit hero in the game, you want to minimize your time out in the open to reduce the chances of getting bonked in the head. Diva is able to mitigate most of the spam damage from Hanzo's Storm Arrow, and most satisfyingly, you can use her DM to eat his dragon. I got it, I got it. For the DPS role, the best counter to Hanzo is his counterpart Genji. Genji has high mobility as well as a deflect to protect himself during the duel, compared to Hanzo, where most of his ability focuses on the offensive part. Although Hanzo can wall climb, Genji can also do the same, making Genji ideal for chasing down Hanzo whenever he's low. Finally for support, this is a bit hard, but Ilari is probably your best shot at countering a Hanzo. She has a similar effective range to a Hanzo, but her healing pylon gives her the edge of taking cover whenever she's losing the duel. But the most important tip for all 3 roles is just to pray hard to make sure you just don't get hit by a Hanzo. It's just the stupidest thing in the world, why is this hero even here? This power crap of a hero needs to basically be marked most of the time. Apart from the obvious in finding ways around the team to take out the pylon, countering her ultimate is probably the best way for you to negate her value. For the tank role, D.Va is able to mitigate most of Ilari's spam and deny her from off-angling before and during the fight itself. More importantly, D.Va is able to eat up Ilari's all using her defense matrix and fly easily around the back line to start poking at the pylon easily. For DPS, all the DPS lose to this character, just don't bother. In all seriousness, the best counter is probably Samra. Her ability to hack Ilari out of the ult, although very hard to do, will give a lot of value to Samra, as well as the fact that Samra is able to get in and out of the backline easily, breaking her pylon and pressuring Ilari early. In the support role, Kiriko is your best bet, as Kiriko can flank Ilari and pressure her off the high grounds. Her Suzu can also cleanse Ilari's sunstruck effect from teammates. Junker Queen gets most of her value brawling up close to the enemy. We are looking for heroes that can split the fight away from the front line and reduce the effectiveness of her ultimate. The direct counter to Junker Queen is probably Zarya. Zarya is able to cycle her bubbles to deny Junker Queen's axe, which stop her from gaining lifesteal and increasing the cooldown of this ability. This also gives Zarya a lot of energy and is able to cleanse up to two targets affected by the Junker Queen's rampage. For the DPS role, we have me. Her primary fire is a pain for Junker Queen, as most of Junker Queen's ability requires her to mostly be up in front of the enemy. More importantly, her wall can actually completely block Rampage if the Mei is smart enough to react quickly to it. And finally for the support role, although Suzuing Junker Queen's Rampage is the easiest counter to Junker Queen, just having one ability to counter an ultimate is not enough to provide a good defense. More importantly, Ana is a much more suitable counter for Junker Queen, as an early Ana nade on the Junker Queen, makes the Junker Queen play a lot less aggressively while brawling team. And you might be surprised on how easy it is for you to actually sleep Junker Queen out of a rampage. Against the Junkrat, you need to take any opportunity to play out of its effective range and tight spaces. Junkrat especially struggles against consistent spam and anything up in the air. Sigma is extremely effective in denying Junkrat spam. Apart from that, he can easily farm shields off his kinetic grass quickly to re-engage with the fight after the Junkrat unloads. For DPS, we have Farah. Being a Junkrat with jetpacks, she is usually untouchable outside of the fabled TikTok Junkrat. And finally, we have Moira for support, which is kind of the only support with any decent leverage against the Junk. Junkrat players like to play in tight spaces and it's very hard to push into such spaces. Chucking a Moira op in there where Junkrat is playing can make him low early and give up the tunnel that he plays in. Disrupting her Suzu and chasing her away from your backline are the easiest way to get value against a Kiriko. Winston is able to do so and much more using just his bubble alone. Apart from being a constant threat in your backline, Winston is also able to chase down Kiriko effectively when she uses her teleport to reposition. For DPS, the same concept applies for Baptiste. Sojourn is probably the best bet for Kiriko due to her one-shot ability and also from the fact that she does consistent damage which forces Kiriko to use her cooldowns like TP and her Suzu unoptimally. Surprisingly for support, Kiriko gets countered by Brick pretty well. Brick's shield can block a lot of Kiriko's damage from her kunai and a Brick can force Kiriko to teleport away by bashing into her early on. Life Weaver is like the Soldier 76 of support. He just does too much but doesn't really excel in doing anything well. For the tank role, there really isn't any good counter picks for Life Weaver, but the hero that gives off the biggest impact in the current state is probably Zarya, due to the fact that Zarya is able to out damage Life Weaver's single target heals and force cooldowns out of Life Weaver pretty effectively. Sure, the petal platform might counter the Graviton surge to an extent, but it probably don't really want to count on that. 
For DPS, Tracer is pretty good against Life Weaver because Life Weaver tends to stay at the very back of the team most of the time. Due to this fact, Tracer is able to catch Life Weaver or at least force the cooldowns out of Life Weaver, forcing him to reposition forward, allowing your team to follow up on the kill. Life Weaver's kit is very niche and mostly depends on his tree of life for value. A high damage support like Zen and the constant pressure of the Discord on the enemy tank will quickly exhaust the healing output Life Weaver is capable of. Countering the frog mostly involves disrupting his high mobility abilities or taking favorable duels with him. For the tank role, a direct counter with Lucio would definitely be Ramatra. Due to Ramatra's unique Ravenous Vortex ability, Ramatra is easily able to pull Lucio down from a wall, exposing him to more dangers. This easily stops Lucio from peeling for his team and even disrupting an enemy rush coming in. For DPS, Farah is a really good counter because Lucio's wall riding is pretty much very linear and predictable when looking it from the air. This makes him an easy target for Farah and allow her to do a lot of poke damage by splashing the walls on Lucio. Lastly, we have Moira, which pretty much fully counters Lucio during a 1v1 due to the fact that she can out-heal Lucio and even out-damage Lucio in any situation. By launching her heal up during the duel, she is pretty much unkillable to a Lucio player. Maunga is one of the best tanks to assassinate enemy squishies. His kit is paired with immense self-sustain and an escape ability if needed. That being said, the best way to prevent a Maunga from engaging on your team is to pressure him early on or to displace him from walking in. Orisa is the immovable object for this unstoppable force. Orisa's fortify allows her to out-sustain a Maunga head-on, paired with a javelin spin and throw, ensures Maunga is unable to comfortably engage and take a duel with the enemy. For DPS, Hanzo exploits Maunga's lack of tankability outside of combat to effectively whittle his health down before the brawl breaks out. Being able to take off angle from the team greatly benefit his survivability as well during the engage. And best of all, Dragon Strike effectively will connect entirely with the enemy Maunga during his cage fight. For support, Zen's Discord AWP paired with Maunga's humongous hitbox melts him every time when he commits to the brawl. Similar to Hanzo, spamming him from range is massive and stopping him from playing aggressively into your team. With Mei in her current state back to the one similar in Season 1, you want to constantly create distance against a good Mei and hope that she just doesn't double dink you in the head from range. For the tank counter, you definitely want to pick Orisa as she is able to withstand Mei's slow effect using her fortify well. Orisa also has a javelin which is able to displace Mei easily from the front line and even control her from staying too close from your team. For DPS, Sojourn will be the good counter because of her high mobility as well as a high damage potential that would definitely force Mei to use her cooldowns a lot earlier and and can slide out of her blizzard and her wall effectively. Lastly, we have Lucio, which can constantly boop me back whenever she gets too close and even run into the Mei for a duel. By riding up in the air, it is common for you to deal a couple of burst damage on Mei's hitbox. It is common for you to land a couple of headshots against the Mei and force her to use her ice block early in the fight. Mercy is an elusive hero, exploiting her high mobility to stay alive and away from the fight. You want to pick heroes that can either pressure her to cover or can actively hunt her down. Diva would be the best tank to hunt down Mercy's. Since Mercy is an enabler that relies heavily on pocketing her DPS to shine, Diva is effectively able to mitigate most of the damage from said DPS and can even punish Mercy when she uses her cooldowns carelessly. As a DPS, Sombra's perma stealth in the enemy backline, paired with her virus, makes assassinating Mercy easier than ever before, pairing it with Hack to lock down her wings for an easy elimination. Much like Farah, Ilari is ideal for putting pressure on flying Mercies, effectively limiting her visibility during the fights and prevents her from making the ideal plays and callouts for her team. Carry Moiras tend to prefer taking things into their own hands by aggressively engaging in duels on unsuspecting enemies. Most of her dueling potential comes from her ops along with a tiny hitbox even at close range. For the tank role, Diva is able to pressure Moira with her low flight cooldown along with her micro missiles. DM is also often used to absorb the Moira ops, removing a large portion of her dueling capabilities. Widowmaker is able to pressure her from range since Moira requires close range both for her healing and for her to charge her resource. The one-shot potential of Widowmaker tends to scare off most Moira players into going in for a 1v1 ahead of their front lines. Anna's nade is one of the easiest cooldown to use to force a Moira to burn her fate early. With her escape ability gone, this opens up a key window for you and your team to aggressively push into a Moira and secure the elimination.
While Orisa is excellent at tanking a large chunk of damage, she is unable to provide value in a dragged out fight due to her low DPS. You want to pick heroes that can find value in a drag out engagement and slowly build up resources as the fight progresses. Zara is one of those heroes that is able to farm damage from the Orisa and cycle bubbles to the Orisa's cooldown to effectively build up charge and a fast graviton surge. Her high DPS also denies Orisa from taking space aggressively outside of using her fortify. Being unable to block beams, Symmetra is lethal to an Orisa if they are not able to pick you out first. Symmetra also brings a TP that can save teammates from an Orisa all easily, as well as provide an escape route from the front lines if needed. Lastly for support, Baptiste is ideal as he can both deal lots of burst damage and provide the sustain needed for the team to take the Orisa head on. Not to mention, Immortality feels one of the most effective ways to counter an Orisa op if your teammates are caught in it. For Farah, her flight is actually one of her greatest weaknesses. Being open in the air for the most part, heroes that can seize the opportunity to collapse on a Farah will excel in this category. For Tank, Diva is by far the best tank to deny a Farah. Diva is able to absorb most of her rockets and fly in to contest a Farah during a teamfight. Even with her mercy pocket, she is able to put significant pressure on either one and her DM entirely negates the rocket barrage. With most hit scans having a damage fall off, Echo is the best pick against a Farah. Her fly can reach up to Farah Tight I, easily, I, I, I and paired with a focusing beam, she can out DPS a mercy pocket whenever the Farah is under half HP. And lastly, for the support, similar to Echo, Farah is very weak against Ilari due to the constant pressure Ilari is able to exert from any part of the map. And if you're feeling brave, you can use your Sunstrike duration to fly around and even take the duel on the Farah. Ramatra is a tempo tank that plays off its nemesis form to deal potent damage and take space aggressively. With a shield to take cover outside of nemesis form, your best window to control Ramatra is to act when he is using this cooldown to engage. As such, Orisa is the best tank due to her displacement abilities like javelin spin and throw. Her fortify also allows her to stand her ground while being pummeled and spam the Ramatra shield from range. Any poke DPS is really decent against Ramatra but Ash tends to be the best pick in general. Due to her constant DPS with dynamite before the Ramatra starts to engage, as well as an escape ability in her coach gun when the Ash is being targeted. Lastly, for support, Anna Nate makes Ramatra very vulnerable during his nemesis form as he is not able to push up for long, even while guarding with his hands. Not to mention, being slapped in nemesis can drastically negate his value and prepares him to receive a large chunk of damage that is hard to recover from. Reaper is a close range DPS that relies on his shotguns to deal a high burst amount of damage. Any hero that forces a fight outside of his effective range punishes the Reaper to burn his cooldowns unoptimally and opens opportunities for you to catch him. Sigma is able to do just that as he is able to deny Reaper by poking him out and forcing cooldowns early while also absorbing most of his frontline damage using Kinetic Grasp. Sigma can also cancel a Reaper's Death Blossom using a well timed accretion. For DPS, we have Cassidy, a mid-range hero that can play right outside of the shotgun's effective range, and a well-timed magnetic grenade essentially allows you to disable his Wraith for a clean escape. Lastly for support, the short cooldown on the Lucio's boot makes him the king of controlling a Reaper. Lucio also has a lot of mobility to run away from one, making Lucio very very hard to kill. Reinhardt is a close range melee tank that likes to play in a brawl and rush style by leveraging his high shield health to close the distance. Putting early pressure on the shield is key to pushing back a Reinhardt from engaging effectively. Thus, Orisa would be the best tank as she is able to deny Reinhardt by displacing him back and using CCs with a javelin. Oh she is also God, able I to block Reinhardt's charge both during his engagement and more importantly his disengagement using a fortify ability. Hanzo's shield break capability is immense using storm arrows, and the fact that Hanzo is constantly able to put pressure on Rhine from places where Rhine simply cannot touch him at all is key to pushing a Rhine back. Lastly, we have Zenyatta, a hero with a lot of spam potential that can break a shield very very fast. Also, don't underestimate a well-timed kick on the Rhine, as this might just be the window your team need to secure a kill when he is too close. After receiving a major rework, Roadhog is now brawlier and tankier than ever. Even so, typical counters that can catch him while his hook and breather cooldowns are still on still plays a huge effect in countering Roadhog. Technically, the best tank to counter a Roadhog would probably be Roadhog himself. Hawk is now a stable tank buster and paired along with a pig pen can allow him to dish out high consistent close range DPS before the enemy Hawk can use his breather to recover. Although Reaper is still good against Roadhog, 
I believe Bastion might be stronger, as Bastion is able to survive the new pick pen plus hook combo and is effectively able to cut through Roadhog's 30% damage reduction with ease at point blank. And lastly, we have Ana, which can nade Roadhogs take a breather consistently, denying the Roadhog from free roaming in the front line. Hog is also a very easy target to land sleep darts on, putting him outside of the fight long enough for your team to escape when getting hooked in. Sigma's strength lies in acting as a high DPS, anchoring tank for the team to push bursts of damage for a period of time. You want a hero that can constantly be an annoyance to the Sigma when he is outside of the fight recovering his cooldowns. Although most professional teams are playing Rhine to counter a Sigma composition, I would actually advise picking Ramatra instead. Ramatra is able to cleave through Sigma's barrier and even damage Sigma while he is using his kinetic grasp. Ramatra can also keep Sigma's toes on the ground as he tries to listen to the melody in his head. For DPS, Ash is good at creating pressure on the Sigma using her Dynamite, which can easily be detonated around his shield. Not to mention, she can also use Bob to open a secondary angle against the Sigma and can provide a key opportunity to pick off the enemy backline as the Sigma repositions his shield. And for support, Baptiste can provide a significant amount of damage to break the Sigma shield. More importantly, he can also use Lamb for the Sigma's Gravitic Flux without the need to charge up a defensive ultimate. Sojin's strength comes from charging up her real gun to deal little amount of damage to secure a kill on squishy heroes. Funny enough, heroes with small hitboxes do play a significant role in reducing the amount of charge a Sojin gets throughout the game. The best tank counter for Sojin is probably Junker Queen. Queen is able to close the distance and pressure Sojin fast using her combat shout. Not to mention the threat of a jagged blade which can deny the Sojin's slide entirely forces the Sojin to play far from the front line. Sojin is unable to farm charge effectively off Junker Queen as well due to her small hitbox compared to most tanks. DPS wise, we have Genji. Once Sojourn uses a slight ability, she pretty much becomes a training bot where you dash in and you dance around her to secure the easy elimination. And lastly, we have Ilari. Ilari beats Sojourn Ooh, most of the nice. time when Sojourn does not have a charge shot ready. In a 1v1 situation, you want to abuse natural cover to ensure that she does not have the time needed to build to a 100% charge shot before you can finish her off. Nothing much to say about Soldier. Most of the time, it's about quickly adapting to the soldier's positioning as he runs around the map for different angles. Hence, the best tank to countering a soldier is definitely D.Va. D.Va is a consistently strong DPS that can burn through the soldier's healing pad up close. D.Va is also able to close the distance and negate all the damage put out during his visor. Sojourn can easily out-damage a soldier even through his biotic field using her real gun and a high charge shot. Not to mention that she has a slight ability in the event that you are not able to land enough shots on the soldier. More importantly, as a support, Ilyari can do the soldier very well by abusing her healing pylon and her vertical mobility. The enemy soldier will find a hard time dealing a significant amount of damage against an Ilyari if you are able to reposition quickly during duels and abuse natural cover while being pocketed by your pylon. Currently, Sombra is really exploitable as she no longer has a get out of jail free card in her old translocator. Thus, I would say Winston would be the best tank to hunt down a Sombra as Winston is able to leap after Sombra's translocator and isolate her down easily. One neat trick is to also hold primary fire around chokes as this does not allow the Sombra to simply walk into your backline before the fight starts. DPS wise, Tracer would be the ideal pick as she is now able to chase after the Sombra when you see the translocator flying through the air. By also having a second life using recall, Tracer would ideally win most of the 1v1s when the Sombra engages on your backline. For the support, Brick negates most of Sombra's value using her armor pack. She can also block a predictable virus using her shield which drastically reduces the Sombra's capability to assassinate the backline. Not to mention, an early shield bash into a Sombra would force her to use TP prematurely. Symmetra is a highly immobile character with high damage output but lacks in range. She is overly reliant on her teleporter to navigate to key locations but makes it easy for you to exploit it once you are aware on where it's placed. The best tank counter for Symmetra would be Doomfist. Doomfist is able to cut players as they rotate through the Symmetra teleporters and can get in and out of the fight easily, leaving Symmetra with minimal charge on her primary fire. DPS wise, Farah is able to dodge most of Symmetra's attacks and turrets, making it easy for Farah to break down the teleporters from range and take duels with Symmetra when she is isolated from the team. Lastly, we have Ana, which can nade Symmetra, making it easy for you to kill her as she plays close to your team. Not to mention that her nade is also critical for you to destroy TP bombs when she tries to assassinate your backline. 
After Torbjorn's recent buff, Top is surprisingly strong in close range and decent in the mid range as well. It is a lot harder for you to dive a Torbjorn too because of his Molten Core ability. Hence, you want to look for heroes that can poke him consistently from range and secure an easy break on the turret before the fight begins. For the tank role, I would recommend Sigma, since Sigma is able to outpoke Torbjorn by using his shield and take down the turret with minimal effort. For the DPS, Farah provides an easy kill on the turret as well, and Torbjorn lacks the movement ability, making it easy for you to consistently land direct rockets on him. And lastly for support, we have Zenyatta. Similar to the heroes above, you can easily break Top's turrets outside of his range, and you can land lots of effective poke damage on Torbjorn due to his fat hitbox. Tracer is a lethal assassin in your backline. You will want to choose a hero that can sustain multiple clips from the Tracer, which will provide you the time needed for you to land the necessary shot and push her into recall. No tanks particularly counter Tracer, but the best one you can pick is probably Orisa. Orisa can sponge up most of Tracer's damage using a fortify and her high armor pool. Not to mention you can also try to eat Tracer's pulse bomb using Javelin Spin. Tracer player also have to be extremely wary as a well-placed Javelin would eliminate Tracer instantly from the fight. For DPS, Torbjorn is an extremely annoying pick for Tracer due to her low HP. By placing an unexpected turret out of range, it would shut down any flank from a Tracer consistently. And for the support, Brick can whip a Tracer away and force Tracers to use Blink and Recall by actively bashing into her. It is also very hard for Tracer to one-clip someone which have an Inspire active on them. You can also use the shield to negate a lot of Tracer's damage and can block her pulse bomb. Taking it slow against a Widow is the best way to reduce her effectiveness. Wait for heroes that can pressure her to engage first so you do not end up playing Respawn Simulator. And during the fight, look for opportunities to do damage to her to keep her in check. The best tank to match up against a Widow has to be Wrecking Ball. Ball has the ability to constantly pressure the Widow by keeping her on her toes from his boop and slam combo. Ball also cannot be headshot while rolling around and can easily pick off Widow when she is hard scoping and not paying attention. As a DPS, if your aim is good enough, a Widow 1v1 is ideal. If not, playing Hanzo is also effective enough as Hanzo is able to pressure her at long range along with a sonic arrow to show her positioning for your team so that your teammates can also play around her effective sidelines. If you are confident in taking the 1v1 as a Lucio, that would be your best bet. But Ilari is also excellent at dueling a Widow as she only requires 2 charge shots to secure the kill. If the Widow misses the first shot on Ilari, she is pretty much forced to move away as Ilari can use her movement to dodge subsequent shots. Winston is a dive tank that wants to engage on your squishies consistently and cleave through your entire backline. Any hero that can shorten his stay there would be the way to keep a Winston from tearing apart your supports. Junker Queen is able to pressure Winston consistently with a high close range burst damage and the ability to punish a Winston from jumping away with a well timed Jagged Blade. For DPS, just simply pick Bastion and just shoot him, it's really not that hard. Reaper can also be ideal when you want to go on the offensive as you can also TP into the backline as the Winston disengages but most consistently, Bastion will do the trick. As a support, Brick will be your best bet as you can witch shot the Winston while he's jumping in. Her inspire and packs also make it super difficult for Winston to land a solo kill on your teammate to burn through that much healing. Wrecking Ball is overly reliant on his high mobility to run into your backline and escape unharmed. Heroes that can break his grapple and disrupt his patterns are the best against this hamster. The best tank would be Junker Queen. Queen is able to disrupt Ball's momentum with a Jagged Blade, which can keep the Ball in the fight longer than he expects, especially when his cooldowns are down. For the DPS role, Mei is best both for survivability and the annoyance of her ice wall to block escape routes for the Wrecking Ball. She can also provide constant damage output against the ball, and that is key for forcing him to retreat earlier on. Lastly for support, Brick can whip shot the ball away and save teammates that are slammed using her packs and inspire. She can also partially block the slam damage using her shield, and overall just makes her teammates that much harder to kill. Play smart around Azaria and look for ways to punish her when she is low on charge or has expanded her bubbles carelessly. There are many approaches to countering Azaria, but most importantly is to push for a kill before she gets high on charge or waste her time deliberately as her charge depletes. Roadhog might just be the best tank counter to Azaria. Hawk is able to almost one-shot Zara using his pick pen and hook combo. This requires a little cooperation with some of your teammates to finish off the kill, as if you do not, you will end up against a full charge Zarya. 
For DPS, Sojourn is your pick. You want to weave in charge shots on her face to force her to expand her bubbles prematurely or take cover constantly. Most importantly, you do not want to feed charge to her when she uses her bubbles, as this grants you minimal real gun charge as well as reduce the time you have to pressure her away during the fight. For support, a hot take, but Life Weaver is very annoying to play against Azaria, with 3 abilities to save teammates from a graviton surge, namely her pool, petal and her tree, as well as an escape pool to save teammates being beamed down. This reduces Zarya's potential in securing easy kills even on high charge. Discord Orb is Zenyatta's best ability. Finding ways to exploit the Discord mechanic and its uptime would make Zen no more threatening than a support with the least healing in the game. Due to the current patch, the best tank right now would probably be Zarya. Zarya is able to cleanse Zenyatta's Discord Orb using her bubbles, which will stop Discord from being placed on her for the next 7 seconds. This can give Zarya free reign in the front lines and stay a lot longer compared to other tanks. Tracer is deadly for Zen, but not for the reason you might think. It is surprisingly hard for a Tracer to land a kill due to Zen's snap kick. As a Tracer, you want to distract the Zen instead, taking his attention from the Discord off of your tank and attract heals from his other support your way and away from the fight. And lastly in the support role, Ilyari outranges Zen by a mile, and Zen has a very big hitbox, easy for Ilyari to land shots. Her high healing output also gives your tank the chance to keep fighting even when the pressure of a Discord is on them. And with that, there's all 39 heroes and their respective counters. This took a lot longer to make. A big shout out to all the 3 professionals who have lent in their opinion in this. If you have any questions, feel free to fill it up in the comment below.